Hey guys, Engineer Geek here today. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make an obstacle avoidance robot. Let's get started. At the core of any robot project is a chassis or a body. Any type of chassis will do, uh, but the key components that you're going to need within the chassis is uh, the body itself, two DC motors and wheels, a bovine wheel of some description, and lastly, a battery pack. For this project, you'll also need a HC SRO4 sensor or some other type of ultrasonic sound sensor. I've done a video on the HC SRO4 sensor, so if you're a little bit confused on how it works or the theory behind it, please go check out that video. Underneath the HC SRO4, you'll see a servo motor, in this case a micro servo. This servo motor allows us to sweep the ultrasonic sound sensor. This way it can detect obstacles to the left and right. Although it isn't necessary, I found that a mini breadboard uh, really helps with the wiring. The brains of our robot is an Arduino Uno, uh, in this case I'm using an Uno clone. They're great for prototyping, especially small projects such as this little avoidance robot. As well as an Arduino, uh, you'll need a, a, a motor shield of some description. In this case I'm using the MH Electronics motor shield. It can drive up to four DC motors as well as control two servos. The only tool that you actually need is a, a flathead screwdriver like a small flyer like this. However, there are a few tools that will help you along the way. One of the first useful tools that I found within this project uh, was wire strippers. A great tool really if you're going to be working with electronics in, in the long run. The next tool I recommend uh, is a soldering iron. I used this when attaching wires to the motors just to make sure the connection was solid. And the last tool that I found really helpful was a hot glue gun. Uh, this can be replaced, of course, with like double-sided tape and things like that, but a hot glue gun is a great way to glue the part on. For example, the servo, uh, the protective case, and the battery pack. So before you start the wiring, uh, if you have ordered a chassis, like the, the kit that I've got, uh, follow the instructions within that kit until you've got the full chassis built. If you decide to not use a kit and simply use you know, things that you've got around the house, uh, make sure you're up to this stage so far so that you've got your motors and wheels attached to the chassis. You've got your servo glued down at the front. Uh, a mini breadboard behind it. One final thing that I did before I started my wiring was I soldered some pins onto the analog rail of the motor shield. What this does is it makes the wiring a lot easier and you don't have to crunch any wires into the Arduino. As for wiring from the Arduino, uh, basically all you're going to want is a wire going from your 5 volt and a wire going from your ground. However, if you haven't sold on the analog pins like I have on my motor shield, uh, you'll also need two wires, one going from A5 and one going from A4. Once you've got your wires going from 5 volt and ground into your mini breadboard, uh, you can then go ahead and insert your motor shield. To do this, you line up the pins on the motor shield to the pins on the Arduino. So you place them over, putting in a side at a time. So as you can see, they're in. When you're inserting the motor shield, uh, do be careful, obviously. Don't put too much pressure onto it. Uh, if it feels like you're forcing it, then, then your wires are probably either too thick or they're just not positioned correctly. And of course, both the Arduino and Motor Shield have sharp parts, so always keep that in mind. If you've soldered pins into your analog Motor Shield, uh, this is where you're going to want to put your female to male jumper wires and put them into your mini breadboard. What we're going to wire up is the ultrasonic sound sensor. What I've done is I've made this piece of cardboard here, which I've got glued round to fit around four female to male wires. I've done this so that I can basically just slot in my ultrasonic sound sensor. So as you can see, as you can see on the back of the uh, HCSR04, there are four wires that come out of it. Uh, one of them is ground, so put that into the ground coming out the Arduino on the mini breadboard. One of them is VCC, so put that onto the 5 volt coming out of the breadboard. And then with echo and trig, uh, put your echo to your A5 on the breadboard and then put your trig to A4 on the breadboard. Once you've got the sensor all wired up, uh, at this stage I highly recommend that you load a test code for the sensor, run the program and load up the COM port. 
if the sensor's working and it's all wired up correctly, uh, you should see that in the COM port by moving your hand across from the sensor and it'll display in the COM port if the distance is changing. If it is, then you know your wiring's correct and you can move on to the next stage. So to connect the servo, we simply line up the coils coming out of the servo to the board, like so. For the final part of the wiring, you're going to want to wire the motors and the power to the motor shield. Uh, to do this, you've got these headers up and down the side. So you simply unscrew the top, uh, put the wire inside and turn it. So I'll demonstrate with this last wire I've got remaining. So we first unscrew it with our screwdriver. We put it inside, we screw it down until we can feel that resistance. Pull it just to make sure. As you can see, it's securely in place. A problem that you might encounter during this project is that the wheels might turn in the wrong direction as to what they should be doing. Uh, a simple fix for this could be just to change the way that these wired are positioned. So for example, put the positive in this side and the negative in this side. For the final bit of wiring, uh, just as we have over here with the pin headers, we got one for our positive and our negative of our battery pack. Uh, so you simply connect the negative up, screw it down, and you connect the positive up and screw it down. So once all of the wiring is complete, simply upload the code to the Arduino. So let's see this little guy in action. In the description you'll find a link for the code. In today's video I'm not going to go through each line of the code. Uh, I'll leave comments within the code so that you can see what each line means and hopefully from that you'll be able to learn more about how the robot works. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content in the future.